What is going on everybody? Um, well, I gotta get past my air conditioner making noise, but uh, welcome back to the World's Worst Fishing. I'm Chris Jones and uh, just got back into town like a few hours ago, uh, headed down to Tampa. Um, and uh, so we were going down there for, uh, for a wedding in the family, which I think I mentioned last video. And uh, so just got back into town and I'm in the mood to make some baits. And I said, well, we'll keep it simple today. And, uh, and we'll just make a really cool stick worm color with like a split color tail. Um, so if you're new to baits and you've never tried like a split tail color, it's as simple as just shooting the tail, cutting it off, leaving that in the mold, close the mold back, then shoot the remainder color. Um, and I'm gonna, uh, we're gonna do that in the most simple type of worm today, just a straight worm, a stick worm, uh, better known as a Cinco style worm. So that's what we're gonna do today. Um, and uh, I think um, I think it's it's valuable just to kind of know some of the simple tricks. And um, this is um, just one of the one of the more fun, easy ways to get really great effects. You can do this with crawls. You can make like just the tips of the little claws a different color, and boom, your craw bait just looks just next level from just a solid color. Um, and of course, you can do this with finesse worms. You can do it with ribbon tails. You can do it with frogs. Just change the color of the legs. What we're going to do is we're going to save these for a future giveaway. Um, so we're coming up on 9,000 subscribers right now. And uh, with your guys' help, sharing my videos, telling your buddies about the channel, we should get to 10,000, hopefully in a month or so. Uh, fingers crossed. That may be a little bit uh, wishful thinking. But once we get to 10,000, we're going to do a big giveaway. I may even do a smaller one before then. But um, anyway, these are going to be some uh, future giveaway baits. And uh, also just kind of a, a quick little tutorial um, for how just to do split tail colors. And um, if you haven't tried that yet, I think you'll find it a very valuable uh, little trick to do. So without further ado, we're gonna head back into the fish cave. Okay, so here's our setup today. So we're going to do basically a kind of dark watermelon green pumpkin. You'll tell I use this color a lot, it just looks good. This is MF dark watermelon. Item 3377X2, don't really know what that means. Um, so we're gonna do like a watermelon, orange, and blue stick worm that's gonna have a little bit of small green for texture and highlight. And then of course, some medium black. Um, so it's gonna kinda be just an all around good pumpkin base brim color. And then we're gonna do orange tips um, for the very end of the worm and um, the orange will kind of match the orange flake a little bit here um, So that's what we're gonna do and um, I'm gonna go ahead and dump some of this color in um, I don't really need to be too careful. This is a very thin colorant. You have to put a lot in to make it too thick um, So, you know, I'm not going to accidentally overdo it by mixing this up ahead of time but if you're new to your formulas, uh, it's always a good idea to cook your plastic first, take it out clear, then you can add a little bit at a time. You know, that way you don't mess up and maybe put too much colorant in. Um, you know, because you can always add more, but you can't take it back. So, um, we're going to go ahead and nuke that. And, um, and then we'll bring out our orange plastic, which we're going to make the tips with. Okay, so what I have here is some uh, remelt dead-on plastic worm worm blend plastic um, this is leftover orange because I, I didn't need to mix up new orange so I figured I'd save a little time on the video so basically to make split tail colors you have to basically shoot the molds first with the tail color and uh, I may not get all four of these on this shoot alone yeah no way stick worms drink a lot of plastic so what we'll do is we'll just start with the three molds first right right quick or really quick and um, so we'll let those set up while the uh, pumpkin plastic is cooking and um, once those are set we'll take them out and show you what we're doing and uh, then we'll be ready to move on uh, for the uh, pumpkin color 
Okay, so we have our green pumpkin side cooked up, as you can see right there. Now we're gonna add some sparkle. So, we're gonna add this medium-sized black, and this was a cup and a half to start of Plastisol. So we're just gonna do one measuring scoop of the uh, medium black, 0 0.035, that's a quarter teaspoon. To me, that will do it right. And um, let's see, now we're gonna move on to the blue. All right, we're gonna do the same thing. Just a full scoop of blue. Quarter teaspoon of blue. Okay, now we're gonna go for our orange. Quarter teaspoon of orange. And you guessed it. Quarter teaspoon of the small green. It's a fairly, fairly simple color. You don't have to uh, really think too hard. All right. Don't have to think too hard. That's Those are the best ones, right? So now we're going to go ahead and get this stuff mixing up here. And it's a pretty busy color, you know, once you add all that flake. And there you go. Look at that, guys. That is a pretty color. So now we're actually going to set this aside. And then we're going to open up the molds. I went ahead and shot the fourth mold with the orange. And, uh, and then we're gonna prepare the molds for the split tail effect. Okay, and to prepare a split tail, we're literally just going to snip off the very tips of these baits. All right, and leave them in the mold. Now, you know, you can do half and half. You can cut it off here, cut it off here, here. Only leave a millimeter, just whatever you wanna do. Um, I like to leave just about a half inch or so. That way it's noticeable, um, but it's not, uh, you know, a, an, an entire third of the worm or anything like that. So technically you have a lot of leftover, so um, you will have a ton of your tail color to play with uh, making other lures after you're done. And they do make split tail molds to where you have a port here, then you would technically have a port for the tail, or they make just the tail mold to where you can shoot, uh, and, and this isn't every mold, some molds are made, or uh, have the tail molds made, but for example, a tail mold of this, it would be a separate mold that would shoot just that tip. And yeah, you still have to put the tips in there uh, um, manually, but you don't have all the waste. So um, anyway, that's all you do. And we're gonna set that mold aside. And I um, mean, you can see it's, um, it's a fairly simple process, but you know, there's only one way to do it, and that's manually. So again, we're just gonna take our little scissors, we're just gonna cut that one off. You know, you can just cut them off real quick and then lay them back in after the fact, and you know, that seems to kind of move things along a little faster. Okay, looking good. Done, that's it. That's all she wrote. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and do these last two, and uh, and then we'll add salt to our color, and. Uh, and then we'll make some baits. All right, so we have our uh, Lure Works fine salt over here. Good stuff, been using it for years. Okay, and since Dead on Plastic, uh, this particular Dead on Plastic um, has a natural sink to it already, we don't need to add a lot of salt. And uh, the reason why that's a good thing is because salt is difficult to work with. It clouds up your color, it sometimes adds moisture, and you have to stir it up before each use. It'll sink to the bottom, and it's kind of difficult to keep it suspended. Um, however, when you're making a stick worm, or if your customer just asks for salt, you still need to use it. However, this plastic kind of allows you to use less than you normally would. So um, we're gonna pop that back in the, uh, in the wave real quick for a few minutes. Well, not a few minutes, probably 45 seconds and then we're ready. Okay, so one last mix up just to get the salt nice and suspended. And we are ready to make these baits. Okay. And uh, because the tips are so small, I doubt I'll be able to get all four molds, but that's okay. There's plenty of plastic left that I can uh, refill the injector with. Okay, 
We'll go ahead and top off that first one, top off the second, move over to the third. And so basically, you know, the, the second color just fuses with the tail color. And, uh, you know, the plastic's hot enough that it kind of joins the two back together. And uh, you come out with a uh, quality working bait. Okay, quick flam accent accents here. All right, here is the first mold. Ooh la la. And that's how you do the split tail. So if you see uh, baits in the store or baits from another small bait maker and they have those little tip colors, that's how you do it. Simple, simple, simple. And I mean, just look how stunning it is you know, especially if you do a little bit of color coordinating, you know, so, okay, I want an orange tip, so I'll put some orange flake. Another popular version of this is like a black with blue flake and then a, a blue tip. Um, you'll probably see those quite a bit just kind of looking around the, the fishing uh, world. Uh, well, the bait world to be more specific. Okay, let's get the next mold. Just going to run through these and bust them out yeah looking good okay next 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 there we go beautiful beautiful color very natural very effective would have a lot of confidence throwing that it's not too crazy or over the top and uh and it's a, a very kind of all around good natural brim color. It has all the colors that you want. And I think it just looks pretty. Yeah, that is it. Yeah, there it is y'all. Check it out. The split tail stick worms right there. Very simple color. And uh, just the effect that it has I think Look at that baby, nice and droopy, nice and soft, just like you want. And very heavy and very dense because of that dead on plastic. So these will be able to cast far um, because of the weight. They'll have a nice sink rate without having to use too much salt. There's not a whole lot of salt on here, you know. Now, of course, if you pull it, some of the salt comes out. And uh, yeah, load those babies up with scent and go to work. Okay, and I did a few bonus baits here. Here is my uh, big hand poured smooth finesse worm in the same colorway, the orange tip. Okay, and a hand pour. And there it is next to the stick worm. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I mean, you guys know I had to make a few extra things, right? It wasn't just gonna be the stick worms. So we'll lay those out. I wonder what's next. Hmm, grass grenade time. Let's see if these look all right. Oh yeah. Now I chose to do a lot more orange on these. I did just the inside of the tails. Um, so if you look at these, what you'll see, and you can do this with your creature bait at home or whatever you have, the outside, this little flapper here, whatever you wanna call that, and then these appendages are still in the green pumpkin colorway. And then just these inner parts are the orange. Oh yeah, baby. Kind of has a uh, October looking theme to it, right? Kind of like a pumpkin fall color, but uh, I'm loving it. And last but not least, had to do a quick crawl in it. This is my uh, punch bug mold right here, as I call it. There you go, with the orange tips. Yeah, it's kind of a, a sampler here. Booyah. What do you guys think though? That, to me, it's just a fun and relatively simple way to just take a, a base color and just turn it into boom, next level. And, um, you know, I didn't invent this <laughs> by any stretch. People were doing this way before I ever figured it out. But um, it's a good way to, uh, to try to add a little bit of uh, pizzazz to your colors 
and uh, I think you can get some really great accents going, you know, between your base color and your tip color. And uh, a lot of guys throw baits like this that have a lot of confidence in it, and uh, I can definitely see why. Okay, everybody, so there it is once more. Hopefully that's uh, in the light. But uh, I have a light that kind of comes from this direction and one up there, so uh, I'm going to get a couple more lights, try to make the lighting a little better as a whole in here. Um, especially uh, so that you guys can see the colors a little better in the future. But um, yeah, I've featured split tail colors on here many times in the past. I even did a full video. Um, the, one of the first, one of the first bait videos I ever did was uh, showing the whole split tail thing, and uh, I've been wanting to do it again. Um, just we've had a lot of new people join the uh, or follow the channel. Thank you for your uh, views. And, uh, and for your interest. And I said, you know what, I need to do that again um, because it's, it's just one of the best ways to turn an already good color into a boom. You know, that's, it's just, now it's twice the color that it was before. And um, hey, that's twice the uh, confidence on the water. But uh, anyway, that's gonna wrap this one up. Thank you, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Be on the lookout for these in a future giveaway, um, whether it be uh, at 10,000 subs, or if I uh, do one between now and then, uh, well, I hope I'm hoping we can get to 10,000. But uh, and let me know which one your favorite, uh, which which was your favorite bait? Was it the stick worm? Was it the hand pour? Was it the crawl? Or was it the uh, grass grenade? So anyway, fun way uh, to to add a little bit of uh, effect to your colors uh, during your bait making. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And uh, be on the lookout for these in a future giveaway.